scrap any plans that you may have made for this coming Saturday because it is the day of Strade Bianche, one of the best one day races on the entire calendar and the first monument of the year. Oh, controversial <laughs> statement in your first sentence, but yes, this is a race that has everything. Beautiful scenery, rolling terrain, the world's top riders and a healthy dose of Tuscany's white gravel roads. Coming up, a detailed look at the short but explosive history of the race, the course they'll take on this year, and indeed the favourites to take the victory. First up though, details on when and where you can watch it. We are going to be broadcasting it, both races, live in all GCM Plus territories, except for New Zealand. Sorry, New Zealand. Sorry. The Breakaway Show with all at Adam and Lloydie will also be back to build up to the live coverage and analyse everything afterwards. Plus, of course, you can catch up on demand or on long and short form highlights after the race. We may also, so I have a very special guest in the studio on Saturday, so stay tuned for that if that comes off. More special than you and Adam. Oh, mate, like a proper cycling star, not two cycling wannabes. Like but Adam. I can't make it. I, I told you I can't come. No. Yeah. Okay, scrap that. Uh, anyway, exact timings of the coverage have just come in, so I can tell you that live coverage of the women's race starts at 10.35 GMT, but of course the breakaway will start 20 minutes to half an hour before that. Right then, on to the race. It's still a young event. You've got to say the first edition was 15 years ago in the autumn of 2007, and the women's race was introduced eight years later. The race quickly went from strength to strength, and already by 2009, it was one of the biggest one-day races on the entire calendar. <laughs> this is the point of the show where you have to get your ninth place in 2009 mentioned, isn't it? Yeah. And then we can move on. Exactly that. We've yeah. done now. Also, the Strava record that I held until that when I beat it in far more favourable conditions in the summer of 2020. Yeah, roaring tailwind, wasn't <laughs> it? It was, that edition. Yes. Anyway, in all seriousness, it is a race that has gone from strength to strength. I will admit that the standard of rides competing is now far higher than the early days and far more importance is being placed on a good result in Siena. Yeah, the role of honour on both men's and women's races from the last six years is like a who's who of the best classics riders on earth. Van der Poel, Van Aert, Alaphilippe, Benoek, Kwiatkowski on the men's side. Van der Broek, Black, Van Fleurten, Van der Breggen, Longo Borghini and Dijkden on the women's side. Not a race where you see an unknown chipper take the win. <laughs> no. Although they do sometimes manage to sneak into the top 10. <laughs> yeah, yes, particularly good. in 2009. Yeah, right, should we remind ourselves how the races were both won last year? Let's do it. Look at that attack now from Chantelle Vandenbroek Black on the climb, and she's got longer Borghini now all in a hurt locker. Chantelle Vandenbroek Black times it to perfection. Goes Macho Van der Poel, lift off for Van der Poel, and Anna Philippe, the man who's trying to follow. Macho Van der Poel, a winner at Strade Bianche. It's heroic stuff. Now I'm even more excited. Yep. Uh, right, let's take a look at the routes for this year's race, which is not vastly different to the last few editions. And when I say not vastly different, I mean, exactly the same. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Why mess with the key ingredients? Exactly the same as last year's route. Uh, the men's and women's races start and finish in the Piazza del Campo in Siena, with the men tackling 184 kilometers. Over a third of that distance is on the white gravel road, 63 k's to be precise, over 11 sectors. That's a lot, isn't it? It is a lot. It is a lot. Uh, the first of those sectors comes after just 18 kilometres as well, so not a lot of chance to get warmed up and settled in before you already have to fight for position. Which is a big difference, isn't it, to the five actual monuments where the favourites can be relaxed for at least the first 100 k's, can't they? Yeah, or in fact the first 290 k's for some reason. <laughs> yes, very true. After that, it's a tarmac descent of nine kilometers, which is going to be extremely fast, and that takes them to the start of the next key sector, Monte Santa Maria. Even longer, at 11 and a half kilometers, and also with a lot of uphill, but also a descent in the middle of that sector, just to make it even more tricky. At the end of that sector, over 90% of the gravel sectors have been done and quite literally dusted <laughs> or muddied, potentially, I suppose. We'll get onto the weather. We will. Um, but then the last of them, Le Tolfa, has often seen the final selection being made. Yeah, it's only a 1.1 k's long, that final sector, but it does feature some of the steepest gradients of the entire day. So it's a real leg breaker, which comes with just 12 kilometers to go. 
From there, it's flat over the top for a couple of k's, which makes it really hard. Then there's a quick descent down towards the outskirts of Siena. Another tarmac climb follows, and then before they know it, they are greeted with the Flamme Rouge. And one of the greatest final kilometers in cycling. The climb into Siena is narrow, it's steep, and it's on paving stones, and it's the last chance to make a difference. We saw Vanderbrook Black and Vanderpool do exactly that last year on routes mm. to their victory. The Flam Rouge, there the road rises, the arena is set, the gladiators are here. Now we get the move, it's lift off number two for Vanderpool. It's key, isn't it? And in most circumstances, the first rider to the top of that climb will win because the remaining few hundred metres to the line are tight and twisty. However, in 2019, you may remember, Julien Alaphilippe managed to get past full sang between the top and the finish line. Yeah, that was another fantastic finish, wasn't it? The women's race is 136 kilometres, with eight sectors making up a total of 31.4 kilometres of gravel. Again, it's exactly the same route as last year, which means that they also have the first gravel sector after 17.6 kilometres, and the key sectors are at San Martino in Granaria and Monte Sante Maria as well. From that point, the route into Siena is exactly the same as the men's race that we just described, with Le Tolfi climb to end the gravel, and then the same climb into the centre of Siena, and ultimately the finish line. Just before we get on to the riders taking part, a quick look at that all-important weather, because as I mentioned earlier, this race can look entirely different if it's wet versus dry. And as things stand, it looks like it's going to be cold, but sunny and dry. Mm. I haven't looked at the wind conditions to see whether I might go further down the Strava leaderboard, <laughs> though, Si. Uh, we still only had one wet Strava Bianca, I believe, back in 2018, but the picture. Was it as long ago as that? I think so, yes. Whoa. I think so. All uh, right, on to the riders, and even in the absence of two former winners of the men's race, Van Aert and Van der Poel, running through the list of possible winners in the men's race could take us quite some time. Yes, there are quite a few candidates there on are. there. The provisional start list has four former winners on it. Julian Alaphilippe, Thijs Brunut, Mikhail Kwiatkowski, and Zdenek Stibar. And of those riders, I would say it's Ben Notes who's shown the best form so far this year. Only done those two days of racing last weekend, Omelope and Kuna, but he was flying in both of them, wasn't he? And I'd say that this profile of Strade Bianca suits him better than those two races. Plus, he's got a good team as well, hasn't yeah. he? Even without Van Aert. Um, the Moulin and Foscus, um, they've got cards to play, haven't they? Have. they? Yeah, Jumbo Visman looked incredibly strong at the weekend. I think they'll be formidable in the one-day races this year. Yeah. Um, Alaphilippe, meanwhile, is yet to take a win this year, but he has come close on five of the six days of racing he's done so far. And it's hard to imagine a course that's more tailor-made <laughs> for a rider like Alaphilippe, isn't it? So he's going to start as one of, if not the, favourite, I think. Yeah. And the man with the most consistent results over the years is Greg Van Avermaet. This is going to be his 12th participation at Strada Bianca, and he's been in the top 10 on eight occasions wow. of the previous 11 starts. Twice finished second, but he's never quite managed to win it. No, and I can't see him taking that elusive win. No. Either. Jakob Fuglsang will lead Israel Premier Tech, but watch out for Simon Clark on that team as well, because he's got history in this race with a couple of top tens before, and he has been flying since the start of the season. He has. Hard to believe he almost didn't get a contract for this year, isn't it? Uh, Bahrain Victorious haven't announced many of their riders as we record this, but Matty Mahoric is one that is confirmed, and a rider I've always thought should do well in this particular race. So Agita leads Bora Hansgrohe. I confess, I know absolutely nothing about how good he is over on Gravel Road, but if he is a confident bike handler, his form so far this year suggests he'll do quite well. Yeah, but it's his first time here. Um, now, it's also um, going to be interesting to see how Trek Sega Fredo's Quinn Simmons goes this True. year, wouldn't it? Um, he was flying at the race last year and then punctured and crashed as well at a really inopportune moments. But if he's got a smooth ride, he could be up there. And he is proven on this type of terrain, mm. isn't he? And US riders have been doing well in one-day races just last weekend, haven't yeah. they? Uh, he was right up there as well in the Leadville 100, I seem to recollect, when he was still a junior rider. On a mountain bike? Yes. So he's got the bike handling skills. Yep. Anyway, Magnus Court Nielsen and Mikael Felgren are the formidable Danish duo that will lead EF Education 
easy post, whilst Roman Bardet, second here a few years ago, looks to be Team DSM's best chance on the day. They've not taken a win yet this year, have they? Well, not only that, they've not even taken a top three in Ooh. any UCI race so far. They'll be hoping that changes sooner rather than later, otherwise it's going to be a long old year for them. Another team with multiple cars to play are Lotto Sudal. Tim Wellens should be here if he's recovered from the illness that took him out of the Omlope, which is a race where Victor Campenarts came fifth despite a crash and about 38 mechanical problems along the way. He did do very well, he, all things considered, he did didn't he? Again, yeah. um, Andreas Kron is another rider who could do well for them as well. And many of you will be pleased to see Thibaut Pino here for Group Arm FTJ. He's made a decent comeback yeah, so bad. far this season, hasn't he? And I'm sure the best is still to come. Stefan Kung is probably their best chance for a podium, though. And he was looking good too at the weekend, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, solid as a rock all season again. Uh, more big names that we haven't mentioned. Alejandro Valverde has already taken three wins this season at 41 years of age, <laughs> same age as me. I think it's a long shot for him a win here, but you can be almost certain he'll be there or thereabouts. Gianni Moscon leads Astana Kazakhstan, uh, whilst his former team, the Ineos Grenadiers, they are being led by Tom Pidcock. Yeah, now this is his, or the first of his main goals of the season, apparently. Unfortunately for Dan, last year he took what is Great Britain's best ever result at this race. Would you believe that? What a statistic. Um, <laughs> but this year, he's going to be on for the win. And I wouldn't put it past him winning no. any race, but especially this one. All right, we've got all this way, and we've not yet mentioned a rider called Tade Pugaccia. Who? Pugaccia's going to do it. Two monuments, a Tour de France. Tade Pugaccia on top of the world. You know, the, the guy that wins pretty much every race that he does. <laughs> yeah. uh, he's another rider, actually, who has uh, three wins already this season. Uh, he was lacking slightly in the finale of this race last year, ending in seven, but given his bike handling and his current floor and his love of racing, I am almost certain he will imp improve upon that this time around. Yeah, he's got Kobe and Formula alongside him as well, which is going to help. Um, and we're still not finished either. Would you believe Michael Matthews leads Team Bike Exchange, Warren Barguil, excuse me, and Connor Swift look to be the riders to look out for. Arkea Samson. That's a team that's been doing well this year, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Right, can we move on to the women's favourites now, do you think? We can indeed. It's Annemiek van Fleurten, really, that we've got to start with. The only female rider ever to win this race twice. She was on fire last Saturday, wasn't she, at Omloop. She's won the only two races that she's got to start this year, and it's really hard to see anybody getting close to her this coming Saturday. I'd agree. Even if you use the smartest, best tactics in existence, it's hard to beat her, yeah. isn't it? But that's exactly what SD Works are going to be trying to do. They've got Ashley Mormon Passio, they've got Lotte Kopecky, Demi Vollering, and last year's winner, Vandenbroek Black, mm. on their provisional team list. They did manage to get the better of Van Vluten did. last year, yes. didn't they? Uh, and with that strength in depth, there's a chance they could do the same this time around. Yeah, it's, it's not a guarantee. It's not. But she was pretty good last Saturday. Yes. Uh, anyway, Mariana Voss makes her 2022 road debut for Jumbo Visma at the race. And given how she was going at the end of the cross season last year, I think she could come out all guns blazing on Saturday. I think, yeah. And she's never won this race. No, she has hasn't. She? So, uh, yeah, I think there's probably about a total of two races she hasn't won in existence, <laughs> uh, this being one of them. But it'd be nice to see her name added to the winner's list. How cool would it be if we had the men's and women's world cyclocross champions also taking out Strada Bianca? That a possibility. Would be cool. It is yeah. a possibility, yes. Uh, anyway, Canyon SRAM will be led by Kasia Nubir Doma, who always seems to be the bridesmaid and never the bride at this race. Uh, like Voss, she'd be a very popular winner, though. I'm hoping that that team will also bring Elise Shavi. She was a demon descender <laughs> over in Mallorca, wasn't she, during our time at the Zwift Academy late last year? So I think she could do really well at this race. Absolutely, yeah, she was flying. Um, Trek Segafredo will have Ellen van Dijk, Audrey Cordon Rago, and world champion Elisa Balsamo, plus Elisa Longo Borghini, and also Lucinda Brand, which is quite a team, isn't it? Crikey, that is quite the team lineup. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Brand's form is after what was a long, albeit very successful, cyclocross season. Uh, FDJ Nouveau Aquitaine Futuroscope have Utrup Ludwig and Cavalli, and possibly Grace Brown too, although she's not on the provisional start list. Yeah, and then finally, Mavi Garcia of UAE Team ADQ. She came really close to victory a couple of years ago, building up a five-minute lead. Do you remember that? And mm. then she was caught by Van Vluten on the outskirts of Siena, who, incredibly, had made up the five, the five minutes, minutes. Pretty <laughs> yeah. much on her own. Yeah. Yes. 
No doubt there will be more riders to add to that list shortly, but as I said, the start is a little bit thin on the ground as we speak on the women's side of Strada Bianca. Right, onto our predictions now, and like last year, we have decided to have a favourite each, plus an outsider each for both races. Would you like to go first, Si? I would, actually. Pleasure. So, my hitters for the men's race, Tade Pogaccia, and then for the women's, I can't look past Annemiek van Vleuten. No. Outsiders, I'm going to go for Tom Pidcock. Um, no, you can't have Tom Pidcock. No? No. Wow. He's the best ever British finisher at the race. <laughs> well, <laughs> true, true. Um, no, OK, in all seriousness, um, Tom de Moulin. I'll let you have that. Thanks, yeah. Um, I think he's an outsider for this race. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the women's, well, the women's is hard to pick because there are not many names on the start list yet. No, it's really just the big names on the start list. So it, it is, doesn't yeah. make it hard, I will admit. So I'm going to go with Mavi Garcia, I think. Yeah, So that'd be nice to see her win. Maybe she needs to build a six minute lead this time. That would help, wouldn't it? Before Van Vleuten starts chasing. That would help. Got All on. right, well, I am going to go for Tom Pidcock. Are you? As my main outsider. favorite side, not an outsider. <laughs> and although this isn't really in the spirit of things, I'm also going to pick Annemiek Van Vleuten. Like you said, it's very hard to look past her, <laughs> given the form she's yeah. shown already this season, and for a few years, let's yeah. be honest. Uh, outsiders, Quinn Simmons, I oh, yeah. think, on the men's side. Like, he was flying last year, wasn't he? And on the women's side, I'm going to go for Marta Cavalli of FDJ Nouvelle Aquitaine Futuroscope. Right then, don't know how you rate GCM predictions, but make sure you put yours in the comments section down below as well. I have a feeling I know how people rate GCN's predictions <laughs> as they've been watching uh, for the last few years. They're getting better. They've not been too bad, Broadly speaking, Actually, yeah. my World of Cycling preview, uh, predictions this year have been spot on. They have, yeah. Maybe you just save the best for GCN+. Plus. Uh, you, you know, Sai, how I do not like to blow my own trumpet, <laughs> but I've just done it. Anyway, uh, that basically wraps up our Strada Bianca preview for 2022. Uh, looking forward to seeing who you think is going to win in the comments section down below. And also, looking forward to having your company on Saturday morning, bright and early, ahead of the women's race start. See you then. Bye for now.